Triumph have a heritage in scramblers that goes back decades, including the world's first production scramblers that were raced by legends Bud Eakins and Steve McQueen. Now, the XE is the big dog in the scrambler range that was first launched in 2018 and has fast become an iconic bike for Triumph. And the new version that came out in 2021 has continued to impress and for very good reason. Once again, I need to say a big thanks to both Triumph Australia and the awesome guys down at Bike Biz Granville for supplying and preparing the bike for review. The new version that was released in 2021 features Triumph's high power version of the 1200cc Bonneville engine. It's an eight valve parallel twin that now exceeds Euro 5 requirements. With a low inertia crank and a high compression cylinder head, the XE has a dedicated scrambler tune that gives you really good power delivery and torque. And as I found out, both on and off road, which means there's 110 Newton meters of torque at 4,500 RPM and an excellent 89 brake horsepower at 7,250 RPM. It also has a wet multi-plate torque assist clutch and a very good six speed gearbox. The Scrambler XE has a very tall seat height of 870 mil, a wet weight of 230 kilograms and a 16 litre fuel tank with a claimed consumption of 4.6 litres per 100 kilometres. The profile of the bike is iconic with a sculpted bench seat and a signature high level twin exhaust. As you'd expect with a premium bike in this style, the suspension is class leading. So you have hefty Showa upside down forks and twin Olin's fully adjustable shocks, both with a massive 250 mil of travel and a long travel aluminium swing arm. It has a 21 inch aluminium rim on the front with a 9090 tire and twin 320 mil Brembo discs and excellent Brembo M50 four piston radial monoblock calipers. On the rear, there's a 17 inch aluminium rim with a 150 slash 70 tire and a single 250 mil disc with a Brembo two piston floating caliper. And it has optimized cornering ABS and optimized cornering traction control. Another thing to note is that the beautifully engineered side lace wheels are tubeless. The Scrambler XE has quite a suite of electronics, including the latest generation ride-by-wire throttle, five riding modes being road, rain, sport, off-road and off-road pro, and it also has rider configurable. You can switch between the riding modes while on the move, except for off-road and off-road pro. All of the riding modes offer different levels of throttle response, traction control and ABS. There is a full color TFT, LED lighting all round, a daytime running light on the headlight, keyless ignition, Triumph's wonderful single touch button cruise control and a USB charging socket. The right away cost for the Triumph Scrambler XE is from $24,890 for the base 2021 model and $25,490 for the twin color versions as tested. The 2023 models are $25,190 for Sapphire Black and $25,700 for the twin color variants. It also has service intervals of 12 months or 16,000 kilometers. I must admit, I was a bit wary when I was picking up the big Triumph Scrambler XE. Even though I thought it looked great and I knew I would love the engine, the combination of the 870 mm seat height, along with the tires that are very much off-road focused, meant that I wasn't really sure how it would fit in with the type of riding that I normally do. But I'm pleased to say that I shouldn't have been worried because even though it's tall, it really is an easy bike to ride. Now top of the list of what I like is the looks. I love the silhouette with the shape of the tank, the big 21 inch front wheel and the flat bench seat. It looks modern and elegant, but at the same time quite rugged. It looks like it's ready to tackle any terrain and the upswept exhaust looks absolutely sweet. The finish is typical high quality from Triumph. The paint is excellent and I love the color of the blue version that I had. I really love spoke rims and the ones with the side lacing look superb, but it also means they're incredibly practical because they're tubeless. The levers are premium and with great feel. The handguards, although plastic, are strong and well made and obviously suit the Scrambler aesthetics. The engine is the same one that's found on the other Bonnevilles, but with an emphasis on high power as opposed to the high torque variant that's on the T120. And even though the engine is great, if I'm honest, I probably prefer the engine mapping on the high torque version. It has great road presence, sitting up nice and high, which makes it very good in traffic. It handles much better than you think it would when commuting. Those big front wheels for me are always an area of concern on the road, but I shouldn't have been worried because the handling is really quite predictable. Even though the seat is quite hard, it is relatively comfortable because you can move around on the seat to get yourself into a comfy position. So on long rides, it's absolutely fine. 
It has excellent ground clearance and the suspension and the brakes are wonderful. In fact, the massive rear shocks have more travel than a grey nomad. I probably wouldn't want it to be any taller as I was on the balls of my feet, which meant when I took it off-road, I just had to be a little bit careful and aware of the terrain. But also, the seat height means you have a great view of what's ahead. The off-road Focus tyres I found to be incredible off-road and also very capable on the bitumen. So all up, there's plenty to like about the Scrambler XE that certainly justifies the premium price tag. So my first and major gripe about the Scrambler XE is the TFT. Just give me a couple of clocks any day because quite simply, I prefer the look. And actually think that clocks would be a better fit for this style of bike. Depending on the theme that you have it set in, it can also be very difficult to read. And if the sun is behind you, it can pretty much be impossible to see. When I picked it up, it was in some sort of dark theme, which in my opinion looks cheap with some kind of weird fake wood inlay. Also, the letters and numerals are incredibly small, making it pretty hard to see for someone who has reading glasses. So basically, this theme is hashtag not good for old blokes. I didn't find the menu system to be all that intuitive, at least initially. So for the first couple of rides, it was actually hard to see what speed I was doing. After spending about 10 minutes or so going through the menu, it started to make sense. And it was then that I found a lighter theme with a nice big speed indicator and taco. This theme I would describe as hashtag good for all blokes, happy days. While we're on the TFT, the back of it needs a cover or something because it sort of looks a little bit unfinished with the exposed cables. Now I did find that my right leg got a little bit hot from the exhaust when I was stuck in traffic, which on a cool spring day was quite pleasant. But I imagine it would get a little bit too hot in the middle of an Aussie summer. The tyres are excellent off-road, but my goodness they are loud when sitting at 100 on the freeway. But keep in mind, the tyres are off-road focused, so I guess that's to be expected. Now when it comes to commuting or riding in traffic and lane filtering, it's a bit of a mixed bag for the Scrambler XE. As I said, the height is great because you have a great view of what's up ahead, but the mirrors and the handlebars sit at the same height as the mirrors of all the SUVs being driven by soccer mums, so my advice is don't filter during school drop-off. Well, for me, it's another winner from Triumph. On-road, the Scrambler XE is absolutely fine, but it's off-road that this bike really shines. The power delivery, handling, and suspension off-road are wonderful. So based on the riding I did hitting the dirt, for me, the Triumph Scrambler XE is a nine. If you're after a premium bike that does a bit of everything, then the Scrambler XE is a great option. So I met up with my mate Drew, who rides a BMW R1250 GS, and we decided to see if we could find some dirt roads. The first part of our ride was down the freeway to the Southern Highlands for coffee at Mittagong. And then it was onto a road that I hadn't ridden in years and the many kilometres of dirt on the Wombian Caves Road. The big scrambler was seriously fun on these tight and narrow dirt and gravel roads. Because of the rain we had had, there was still a little bit of water around and in parts the road was quite slippery. But the combination of the off-road tyres and the long travel suspension meant that the Scrambler XE handled the terrain with ease. When we popped back out onto the bitumen, it was onto Teralga and the fabulous Argyle Inn for a cold beer and a seriously tasty gnocchi dish. And even though we copped a little bit of rain on the way home via Robinson and Macquarie Pass, I really enjoyed my time with the Triumph Scrambler XE. This really is a premium bike with a wonderful engine, great suspension and really cool looking Scrambler aesthetics. Would I buy one? Probably not, but only because of the riding that I typically do. But rest assured, this is a seriously capable bike, both on and off-road. Let me know what you think about the Triumph Scrambler XE. Would you consider this over the XC model or one of the other bikes in this category? If you like this video, then please leave a like. And if you want to see more, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support us here at Biker Talk, then head over to our online store. That's it for today. Till next time, stay safe, bring back the nod, and enjoy your next pie run.